out the name of Jesus today. Let's adore him today. As, uh, as you see me up here and stuff, and I'm so glad to see y'all, even way in the back, Nanny's way back there as well, and so we're so, so glad to have you here. Uh, as we are here together, um, I, I did a video the other day, and when I sat down, and I sat down on this bench, all of a sudden I looked, and something about this corona thing has got my midsection just kind of poofy and lumpy uh, like never before. Okay. Uh, now, now, I hope y'all were honking for yourself and not for me, um, but I had gotten this thing right here. I had gotten this thing off of Amazon. This right here was supposed to take care of all the lumpy parts in my midsection, and so w w watch what happens. I got this off of Amazon, and th this right here, w watch what happens when I take this right here and I chunk it to the ground. N now, you may have noticed something. And here, go ahead and bring that back up here to me. You may have noticed that as I, I took that and I threw it to the ground, that it didn't quite have the, uh, the, 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 the bounce back that, that I wish it would. It, it should be going a little bit higher. And the reality is, let me have that one more time. The reality is that some of our lives today are just like this thing. Uh, we we are, are, are going through some difficult times, and the problem with this is not on the outside. The problem is actually on the inside, and the reason why it won't bounce back the way that it's supposed to, the reason why it can't bounce back, even those of you who are watching on Facebook today, the reason why it won't be able to bounce back is because of the fact that it is not filled. Some of you today, you are thrown left and right, up and down, and the reason why you're not bouncing back the reason why you're going through times of overwhelming depression and, and anger and going through difficult times is maybe because today we are not being filled. There is no, there's no, uh, there's no, no bounce back. And so for a moment, if you could turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 5, all right? Even those of you who are watching on Facebook today, Ephesians chapter 5. And, and I want to give you a phrase I want you to remember. The phrase is this. When it comes to bouncing back, you never will until you get your fill. All right, so you never will until you get your fill. So Ephesians chapter 5, if you are going through times of hopelessness and joylessness and meaningless times right now, wondering to yourself, well, how am I going to make it through this? Well, look, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 5. When you have that, would you flash your lights at me so I know you're still paying attention and we're still here together? Thank you all. Appreciate the back row folks are right there. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 15. The Bible says this, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled, be, be filled 
with the Holy Spirit of God, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And verse 20 says, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want us to focus for a moment as we just, you know, may the Lord add the blessing to his word. I want us, and you can look in your Bible there, or you can look on the Bible app. I want us to focus just on verse 18 for a moment. In verse 18, the Bible simply says this. Look, don't, don't be drunk or don't fill yourself with wine, but instead be filled with the very Holy Spirit of God. Let's face it. Some of us in these times that you're facing right now, that I'm facing right now, some of us in the middle of these times, we are going through some situations where we are filling our lives with things that really will never satisfy or fulfill us. In fact, if you think about it, some of us have been suckered into believing that the more that I get, the more that I have, the happier that I will be. If I get more money, if I get more relationships, if I go ahead and get more activities, more stuff that I put into my life, if I fill it all up, then that'll take care of some of the empty places. Well, let's face it. Right now, this virus has been stripping away a lot of the things that we once held dear, a lot of things that we thought were important, a lot of things that we poured into our lives thinking this will satisfy me, this will give me to the other side, this will be the place of fulfillment for myself, my kids, my family, and this virus has been stripping away all of those things, those things that we once held on to, those things that we thought were important, those things that are no longer there, and now we're having a hard time bouncing back. We're going through these difficulty times and, and these times of stress and trial and strain, and we're having times of difficulty bouncing back. If you're having trouble even on Facebook today, if you're having trouble bouncing back, just give us a little thumbs up and remind us of the fact that each of us right now are having some difficulties of bouncing back. But did you notice what it says in verse 15 through 18? It says this, and this is my, my, my Bogalusa hood rat way. You know, you can read in your version, but, but I look at it, it says this. It says, don't be suckered. Don't, don't be suckered. You say, well, where does it say that, preacher? Well, look at what it says in verse 15. Be careful how you live. Don't be foolish. Verse 16, don't waste your opportunities. 17, don't act thoughtlessly. In 18, it says don't be drunk with wine because it leads to ruin. L l let's face it. There are some things in life that will actually suck the life out of you. There are some things that you go through in life that will just take all of the joy, all of the hope, and all of the meaning out of your life. There are certain people in your life that will suck everything dry. Well, here what the Bible says, look, gives us a couple of examples. You say, what are those examples? Well, if you notice in verse 16, one example that the Bible says that it will suck the life out of you is this word called sin. Sin, the Bible says, will suck the very life out of you. Today, the days are evil. There's evil around us. Um, you know, this past week, we live on Pleasant Hill and stuff, and, and we've had shootings. We've had folks steal bicycles. I mean, you know, we, we've had uh, a lot of stuff that's going wrong. You know it as well as I do. In this town that we live in, especially with all the stuff going on right now, that there are a lot of folks that we could say, you know what, it's true. The days are evil. There are difficult times. There are a lot of folks that are falling into sin. But it's not just the evil around us. Let's face it. Some of y'all may have surprised yourself at the evil that's within you. Um, some of your short tempers, some of the fact that you're having difficulty dealing with some of the stuff, some of the fact that you, you know that in your family there's turmoil and stress and strain. You've come here together, but you've been separated for a really, really long time. And listen, the greatest problem is not our school system here in Bogalusa. The greatest problem isn't the government. The greatest problem isn't the conspiracy of whether this thing is true or whether it's not. The greatest problem is not Democrats or Republicans. The greatest problem is not those who wear a mask and those who don't. The greatest problem is not the virus. The greatest problem is us. It is our sin that separates us from an almighty God. It is our, amen, amen. Uh, it is our sin that separates us from other people. It is our sin that separates us from our own state of mind. It is our own sin. And listen, you will always be empty. You will always be empty because of sin. If you try to fill your life with what will make you happy and what will satisfy you and what you think will fulfill you, you will never find the joy that the Bible is talking about. So don't, don't, don't let sin suck the life out of you. In fact, some of you today, you have come here, and I appreciate so many of you, many of y'all have contacted me, and I hope that you do that this week as well. You may not be able to step into a church. You may not feel comfortable in church, but you felt comfortable enough to come to this drive through because I can't see you, you can't see me, but you know who has seen you for a long time? It's the Lord, and the Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows what's going on. The Lord knows the turmoil at times because of this word called sin, and so many of you know I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to get my life right with the Lord. And so sin will suck the very life out of you. But here's another thing that will suck life out of us. It's selfishness. You may have noticed that in verse 17. In verse 17, the Bible says, look, understand what the Lord's will is. 
The greatest struggle that you and I are going to face today is this. It's the struggle between what does God want for my life and what do I want for my life. The struggle between what is his will and what is my will. And so you're going to struggle with that to understand what God's will is at this time. That has been the greatest struggle. Last week, we had a huge flag, and we said, you know what? I'm going to surrender it all to the Lord. But have you done that this week? If you had trouble doing that this week, it is because of that struggle between what does God want and what do What do I want for my life? And so at the root of your marriage problems, at the root of issues that you're having with your kids, at the root of issues that you're having at your job, at the root of it is selfishness. It's been that way since Adam and Eve that has broken relationships and selfishness today in your marriage, in your family, in the things that you're going through. It will suck the life out of anything. So don't let selfishness sucker you into thinking that that will make you happy. You have a choice today. Am I going to do what God wants to do or am I going to do what I want to do? Am I going to do his will or am I going to do my will? But then here's the last thing I see in the Bible. It says, you know what? The last thing is this. Not only sin will suck the life out of you, not only selfishness will suck the life out of you, but substitutes. Substitutes. Did you see it in verse 18? It says, look, don't be filled with wine, but instead be filled with the Spirit of God. Don't be filled with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, look, it's not just talking about, you know what, I'm going to get lit this past weekend, and you know what, I'm going to get toasty and stuff. That's not just what it's talking about when it talks about wine and getting drunk with wine that will lead to ruin. It's talking about anything that you and I use as a substitute to, to, to get rid of our problems, as a substitute to make us happy, as a substitute to try to figure life out. You say, what are some of those substitutes? You know what, some of y'all, you have your phone out with you right now. You may be watching on Facebook or, or, you know, you're watching there in the back row and so you can see a little bit better. But you know what, sometimes we are on social media so much because we don't want to be social with the very people that are in our house. Uh, we, we have substituted, amen, we have substituted the things that are important uh, to where we, instead, of a, uh, instead of going to prayer, we go to porn. Instead of going to the Bible, we go to the bottle. Instead of going to, to, to just saying, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my life and let God plant some seeds in my life, I'm going to go to weed and everything else. And so sometimes we have these poor substitutes of what will actually make us happy. Uh, we're sliding into everybody's DM and we're backsliding from the Lord at the same time. And so some of us need to realize, you know what, I need to not have a substitute because that will suck all of the life out of me. And so the Bible gives all of these substitutes in sin and selfishness. But I, I want you to know today, uh, I want you to know today that you know what, that, that when all of those things are in your life and sucking the life out of you, you will never be able to bounce back. In, in fact, just let me have that, let me have that ball just for a moment. Appreciate my buddy Justin here. Uh, now, now you may have noticed Justin, through the miracle of television, has been back there, and he has filled this ball up. It is no longer flat. It is something that could bounce back at this very time. You know what's interesting, though, is that this right here has got this little white knob. If I had hair today, this would look really good, because when I take this little white knob out, and I get this thing out of, out of this deal, and, and I take it out, and, and Justin got it to where he didn't let the preacher get it out real good. Justin, get that, get that thing out real quick because we're having technical difficulties because I can't open a plastic ball. Don't laugh at me. Don't honk either because that will be inappropriate at this time. All right, see, I knew some of y'all would do that. Y'all, y'all, all right, go ahead and give that to me real quick. Just keep the, keep the thing out. There you go. Now, you may notice one of the things that happens is, is that you, you can hear it. See if you can hear that. You hear that noise? Honk if you can hear that noise. All right, what is that noise? That noise is where the air is coming out of this thing. And what ends up happening in your life is when you allow things or people or sin or selfishness to come into your life, little by little, that thing begins to just suck all the air out of your life. You see right now, um, if you could see it, this is enough air to actually blow my hair back. You can't see that right now, but it is. Why? Because little by little, when we choose sin and selfishness and all those things, we actually allow those things to suck the very air, the very life out of us. And so the Bible says, look, you will never be able to bounce back. And so if we don't want to have sin or selfishness or substitutes, what do we fill our lives? Did you notice what it says there in the Bible? It says in verse 18, this is what you need to do. If you're having trouble bouncing back, if you're having trouble going and continuing to be depressed and overwhelmed and and angry, and and even if you're having a good day, there's always this thing going on in the background. How can we bounce back in the middle of all the times that we get pushed down and knocked down and just begin to go overwhelmed? What does it say in verse 18? It says this, don't be drunk with wine because that will lead to your ruin to your life. Instead, be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, would you write that down? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's the thing. The Bible says you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Preacher, what does that mean? 
for some of you today, it means you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. It means you need to surrender to him. You need to say, Lord, I need you as my Savior. Lord, there's sin in my life. Lord, I want you in my life. I believe in what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. I believe that he offers forgiveness and eternity in heaven. And some of y'all, you know, you've come here from all these different places. But you know, if I could sit with you in your car right now, your truck or your van or whatever it is, if we could have a conversation, you, some of you here today would be able to say, you know what? I've never given my life to Jesus. You know what? I don't know him as my personal Savior. Even some of you who are watching on Facebook, you know in your life you've never given it all to Jesus Christ. So for some of you, you need to get saved. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And that means that you are coming and he fills you with the Holy Spirit. But this word where it says filled, it goes even further. It's not just filled one time. It's not you putting your name on some church roll or, or you coming out to a parking lot and saying, you know what, I, I love the Lord. No, it's talking about continuously, daily moment by moment that you are being filled with the very spirit uh, of God every single day. How do you do that? Well, what does it say in verse 19 there? It says, sing ha- psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody with the Lord in your heart. You know how you begin to be filled by the spirit of God every single day? You begin to focus not on the things around you, but you turn your focus on Jesus Christ. If you're ever going to make it through this time or any time in your life, you've got to focus on Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the problem is some of us, we're, we're, we're watching things on the news. You're being overwhelmed by the things that you're watching daily. And you, you see it on TV. You read it on social media. You, 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 you listen to it on the radio. And you have all of these negative messages coming in your mind. And the Bible says, no, look, if you want to be filled continuously day by day with the Spirit of God, you've got to fill yourself with the very things of God. Fill your mind with songs of praise and worship. Begin to talk and speak the life that only God himself can give to you. And so the Bible says, look, turn off all that stuff and begin to get your heart and mind right with the Lord. Allow him to build deep roots. But then it says in verse 20, it says this, it says, and give thanks to who? To God, God the Almighty, God the Creator. Give thanks to God the Almighty who created all that we see around us But yet he says, I'm your father. Give thanks in everything. So we ought to have an attitude of gratitude to say, Lord, even in this time, even as hard as it is, I'm going to give you praise and I'm going to give you thanks and I'm going to worship you and I'm going to say, God, you are my my father. And how does he become your father? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ today, amen? You can have life and, amen, you can have life and and, and life eternal. You see, here's here's the deal. Come back here, Justin, for a moment. Justin has been back there, and he's been faithfully blowing this ball up, and he's done a great job. Uh, you, you'll notice that if you remember a long time ago when this ball right here was flat, when, 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 when there was nothing to it, w- watch what happens when all of a sudden this ball right here is, is filled as high as it can go. You see, when you begin to say, Lord, I want you to fill me with your presence. Lord, I want to praise you. Lord, I want to get to know you. When you have been flat on the ground day after day after day, what ends up happening? It's when you say, God, fill my life, God, use my life, God, speak to me, then this is what happens. All of a sudden, where you used to be flat as could be, now all of a sudden, look what happens. Oh, it almost came back to me. Let's try that one more time. What what happens? Because all of a sudden, you're saying to yourself, you know what, I can't bounce back. It's hard for me to bounce back. And all of a sudden, you're saying, no, God's filling me, and God is speaking to me, and I'm focusing on him. I'm not letting things suck the life out of me, but instead, I'm coming, and I'm going to come back. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to go and say, Lord, just fill my life. Now, now, throw it up here real quick. I, I wonder which one is a picture of your life. Are you bouncing back today? Or are you able to say, you know what, I'm taking a hit. It's hard in my life right now, but I am going to bounce back. There's only one way today. There's only one way. It is not through sin. Appreciate that. Where are you at, Justin? Appreciate that. It's, it's not through sin. It's not going to be through selfishness, and it's not going to be by you getting a substitute. The way today that you're going to be filled and bounce back in the middle of these times is that you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to let the Lord himself fill my life. Aren't you tired of being on empty? Aren't you tired of the way that things in your life have just kind of come to the forefront? Because the reality is, some of you, you've been empty a really long time. It's not just today. It's been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks where you have felt empty and apart and not sure of what the Lord's doing in your life. But today, God says it's time to bounce back. It's time to say, you know what, I'm going to give all of my life to the Lord. I'm going to surrender everything to him. That, that's what Brother Wayland's about to sing here in a moment. It says, I am redeemed. I have been set free by the Lord himself. And today, if you need to know him today, if you need to give your whole life to Jesus Christ today, if you're ready to be filled by the Spirit of God, by you saying, Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I surrender my all to you. 
And for a moment, as, as they begin to play, you listen. And if you need to make a decision for Christ, you text me. My number is 985-516-2164. You text me because I want to talk about your relationship to the Lord. And even today, our, some of our, our guys are coming forward to, to, to pray for you in a moment. If while they're having this time of invitation, if you need somebody to pray for you and your family, if you're having a hard time bouncing back and getting to where the Lord wants you to get, you can just turn your flashers on right now. And as you turn your flashers on, you know what will happen? Some of these guys will come by, and they just want to lay hands on your hood and just say, you know what, I'm praying for you. You know what, I care about what's going on in your life. And so you can just turn your flashers on for a moment. They'll come, they'll find you, and we're praying for you. But as they do, you need to make a decision for the Lord. You sing with them as Brother Wayne leads us today. Amen. And friends, I hope that you know that today. Um, I hope that if you're watching us online or if you're here with us today, I hope that you know that. 
that you know that I've been redeemed by the very Lord himself. And because of that, he has filled me. And this week, what I want you to do, when you start getting stressed and overwhelmed and it doesn't feel like you can bounce back, spend some time. You focus back on Jesus. You get into God's word and you say, Lord, I want to bounce back. I want to be filled by the very spirit of God day after day. Now, I want to give you a couple quick announcements, and then we'll let you get on out of here, and you can start your engines up. Here's one thing. Next weekend is Mother's Day. All right, so next weekend is Mother's Day, and what we need you to do is this. If you could, and you can do that, even those of you who are on Facebook, or you can do it while you're in your car right now, we need you to text us a picture of your mom um, or you and your kids, because what we want to do is, is on our pre-service countdown, we want to have a, a slideshow, and so that'll be going on just as a way to honor our mothers. And so uh, if you could do that for next, uh, for next week, we need those by Wednesday to be included. So if you could include those, that would be very awesome. We appreciate that. Next announcement is this. Uh, we will take family pictures right there in your car. So if you want to get here a little earlier, um, they'll be able to take like a framed picture of you in your car. So that'll happen next weekend. If you have a graduating senior, uh, we hope that, you know, that a lot of these seniors have gone through difficult times right now uh, where they've had a lot of things stripped away from them. And so on May 24th, we're actually going to have a time for us to honor our seniors. They're going to be uh, two of these aisles will be free. They'll be able to come down, and I need you to honk for our seniors who are graduating. We got a number of those guys and, and young ladies as well. And so, amen. So look, so we're going to do that on May 24th. If you've got a senior, we need their pictures as well and a little bio of them, and so that'll help us out a great deal. And then on June 7th through the 11th. We used to have VBS at the church. This year, we're going to do VBS at your home. And so we're going to do a virtual VBS. And so uh, that'll be coming up. You can check out on Facebook. You can see the link here in a moment as well. So let me pray for you guys. And then you can go ahead and start your engines. Our guys will get you out of here in a moment. Father, I thank you so much for each person who's here today. I pray, Father God, that you would fill them with the very spirit of God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as they just spend time this week in times where they have difficulty bouncing back, that you would fill them that you would encourage them, and that you would help them to grow in their relationship to Jesus Christ. As they leave here today, Father, would you bless and move in each of their lives, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a honk. Amen. Amen. So good to see you. Amen. Let's sing together. They're letting you out at this time. Thank you all for being here. Those of you who are in the back, I see you as you're leaving. Lord bless you guys. Thanks for being here. Nanny, we definitely see you, and so we uh, appreciate you now. Good to see you all this morning. Amen. Well, let me begin by saying Happy Mother's Day. Now, on Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, is when Mother's Day will be. But we want to invite you already for you and your family to come and join us at Drive In Church right there at the parking lot next door to McMillan's. And we want to invite you to come on that Mother's Day um, to just spend a moment as we celebrate our moms. Uh, some of you may want to come and, and be prepared to take family pictures. Uh, we're going to be able to do that on that day. We'll put you in a frame right inside of your car, and so we'll still be able to socially distance one another. But enjoy that time together. So uh, Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, uh, services will begin at 1030 a.m. Uh, if you'd like to come early, we'll be able to take your picture already. And so we would love for you and your family to join us. Um, it'll just be a celebration, a day that we gather together and just thank the Lord. Um, and so we hope that you'll be able to join us on Sunday, May the 10th, um, 2020 as Westside and our family, our church family and our community is coming to enjoy that time together. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Looking forward to seeing you there on Sunday, May the 10th, 2020. All right, Lord bless you guys. See you soon. All right. Hey, Pastor Marcus Rosa from Westside Emanuel Baptist Church here in Bogalusa. Are you wanting to uh, call a penalty on this COVID-19 because it has messed up your graduation for 2020? That's right. If you're a graduating senior this year for the class of 2020, we know that this whole disease and this virus and everything has messed up your year. All the things that you were looking forward to have kind of been stripped away. 
But do you know what? We want to honor you on May the 24th, 2020 at 1030 a.m. We've been meeting at the dirt cheap parking lot right next door to McMillan's. And during this time, we, we've had a great crowd of folks who've gathered together to celebrate the life we have in Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? On Sunday, May 24th, 2020, we want to celebrate you. That's right. If you are a graduating senior, we want to honor you by honking horns and allow you to come through the middle of our uh, of our time together there in the parking lot for you to be honored, kind of like a little parade. We'll have you drive around the parking lot there and let people honor you and honk their horns in celebration of this important time of your life. And so if you're a parent, or if you're a graduating senior, we want you to message us. Let us know some information about you. We would love a graduating uh, graduate picture so that we can put it in our pre-service countdown. Um, we want to honor you in a certain way. And so um, we want to give you more information. So if you could contact us even right now, let us know that you're graduating. Let us know that you are a senior this year, class of 2020. And so let us know. This is open for not only our church uh, graduating seniors, but the entire community. But we need to know. And here's the deal. If you come, you can come just as you are. But you've got to stay in your car. We'll still be observing social distancing and, and just making sure that everybody's taken care of. But we want you as a graduating senior to be honored on that day. So for our seniors, we would love for you to uh, maybe get into the back of a, of a pickup truck or if you've got a convertible, you can kind of wave like that. Or maybe you just got a car and you want to decorate the side of that car. And so your family can come and sit in that vehicle with you. Uh, we want to make sure that you're out there and you're honored. We still observe social distancing and all, uh, but we definitely want to recognize you on that special day. So you can come as you are, but you got to stay in your car. And so seniors, we're going to honor you. Uh, on this very day, we're going to honk those horns just for you because we're tired of all the things that have been taken away in your life during this time. But we just want to be a special blessing to you. So come on, join us Sunday, May 24th, 2020. Look forward to seeing you guys there.